Hey everyone, in this video we'll cover the process of setting up ICC profiles in PMC Lite with the Nix color sensor. In this process you'll create the ink limits, linearization, and the ICC profiles. Since every printer has different features and capabilities, your process for print mode creation may differ to the workflow you see in this video. You may not have all the dialogues in the print mode creation that I'll be demonstrating. Keep in mind, the overall print mode creation concept is always the same. Start by going to the device menu and select Manage Print Modes. Once in the Print Mode Manager, use the Show Print Mode drop-down list to select which device you'll be setting up the ICC profile for. Use the Queues Available drop-down list to start with a queue. Go to the Spectro Photometers drop-down list and select Nix Pro or the Nix Mini. The remaining options, Ink Set, Media Category, Manufacturer, and Resolution can all be used to narrow down the options. The search field can be used to find specific print modes. With the Nix selected, click on the Settings button. It'll be the button with the three dots to the right. The Settings dialog will open for the Nix Pro or Mini, and at the top you can install the Windows Nix drivers by clicking the Install button. The installer will begin, and you'll be asked if you want to allow this app to make changes to your device. Click Yes to continue. The Installer dialog will lead you through the installation process. Once the driver is installed, you can proceed. You can set a time delay for the Nix, which is the delay between scanning of each swatch in the reference chart you'll be printing out. The default is 3 seconds. You want to make sure there is time to move from swatch to swatch during the setup. Once done, click OK. Next, select a print mode from the list found in the bottom half of the print mode dialog. Click the full print mode creation icon at the top of the print mode manager dialog. A dialog will appear to rename the print mode. We often base it on the media type and resolution, such as 720 by 720 Nix demo. Leave Enabled Advanced Screening ticked and click OK. If your printer has a separate white channel, Digital Factory will know this and ask if you'd like to set the maximum white ink. If you don't need to set the maximum white ink, select No and click Next. Digital Factory will use the white values that already exist in the print mode you started with. You will then move on to the next step, the Rough Ink Limits dialog, which will be covered a little later in this video. If you do want to set your maximum white ink, select Yes and click Next. The Maximum White Ink Wizard will open. Select the page size of your print bed. You can select your graphic to be used for the reference print, but we recommend you continue with the suggested graphic selected, as it covers most white use situations. If you feel you have a unique condition with your artwork, you can select a custom graphic. Finally, set the size you would like to print the graphic. This will establish how many samples you'll have per page. Click Next. In this next dialog, you'll set your printer options. You must set your options at this point as you will not be able to set the options further in the setup process. All future tests will be based on the resolutions and printer options set here. The default options can be used, or you can set them according to your unique situation. Click Next. If your printer is capable of multiple dot sizes, you'll be shown the variable dot setup dialog. Here, you'll be able to select the size of dots used as you print. As in the previous dialog, there's a recommended setting that will work for most printing situations, but you do have the option to select other combinations. The selection already set will use the configuration of the initial print mode selected when you started the print mode creation. Below is the color ink levels on white charts. The default is 80%, which works the majority of the time. This stipulates how much color ink will come out on the test print. If the resulting test sheet has too much ink, then this is where you will reduce the amount of ink. Click Next. This is the maximum white ink dialog. If your printer did not have variable dot capabilities, you were brought to this dialog after the printer options dialog. Similar to the other wizards in Digital Factory, this dialog is where you set the preferred white ink percentage after analyzing a printed chart. You will print a chart with a range of white ink levels. You have a field to establish the minimum amount of ink used, followed by the maximum percentage, and finally the increment of change within the minimum and maximum range. We'll go with the default values here. Click on Print Max White Ink Chart. After a few moments, several jobs will appear in the queue and the chart will be built in the preview on the right. It consists of three red tones at 20, 80, and 50% over one swatch of white. The white in each set increases by the increment set in the chart settings starting at 50% and going up to 100%. Right click on one of the jobs in the queue and select Print from the menu or click on the print icon found at the top. It's best to print on a black or dark colored shirt while setting the maximum white to see the effect of the colored ink with different values of white underneath. 
After reviewing the results, put the percentage that gives you the best result into the field labeled Enter the Preferred White Ink Percentage from the printed chart. For this project, I'm going to use 70%. Click Next. You are now at the dialog to set the amount of white under black. The percentage of white under black is relative to the maximum white ink value set in the previous dialog. Therefore, if the value here is 50%, this is 50% of the 70% preferred white ink value we've already set. There are three preset options, one for DTG and DTF printers, one for UV printers, and one to be set by the user. The third option is not recommended unless you have a deep understanding of the operation of your specific printer. We're leaving the first option for DTG and DTF selected. Click Finish. The Rough Ink Limits dialog now opens. If you went through the Set Maximum White Ink dialog, this area will be grayed out since it was set earlier. If you either chose to not set the maximum white ink or do not have this option for your printer, this window has a series of settings you can choose to set yourself. The settings for resolution, ink setup, and other printer-specific settings will differ depending on the printer you have selected and can be controlled in your printer control panel. For 2-bit per pixel devices, select lower ink amount or higher ink amount found below the options window. Click Print Ink Chart on the left. You will then print the chart from the queue as you had before. After reviewing the printed results, select the desired option from the dropdown on the left, starting at A1. The recommended option is to select Print A1 Chart to test for flooding, if flooding is a possibility due to multiple inks or a high resolution. This will create a single entry chart in order to detect flooding. Print this from the queue as you had before. If flooding occurs, select Flooding, use lower than A1 ink chart. Now click Print Lower Ink Chart that appears on the right. As before, the charts will load as jobs into the queue, and you'll proceed to print these charts. After reviewing the printout and choosing your preferred value, select this value from the chart dropdown on the right. The farthest right dropdown list, which is currently defaulted to small, medium, and large dots, lets you select which dots to use for the print job. This option is only available to 2-bit printers, which have variable dot size capability. If the ink you're using has a thicker viscosity, you can use either one size of dots or a combination of dots such as small and medium. This way you reduce the amount of ink hitting the media, avoiding flooding, bleeding, or banding. Click Next. This is the Fine Ink Limits dialog. You have an opportunity to adjust the fine ink limits if you are close to what you need but can afford to tweak your settings a small amount. The small chart on the right will show, for information purposes only, the distribution of the dot sizes being used. This varies from machine to machine. Some machines can only print one dot size, but two-bit machines can print three dot sizes, small, medium, and large. The final step in the ink limiting process is to print out one more set of swatches by clicking on the print ink chart on the left and printing from the queue. This would print charts from A1 to A7 if you had selected A1 in the previous dialog, or B1 to B7 if B1 was selected previously, and so on. Here you can look for any banding, coalescence, bleeding, and to see if the colors look reasonable. The top part of the ink chart should have rich and uniform ink with good saturation. The bottom part of the ink chart, the numbers should be clear with little to no bleed. Based on what is seen in the printout, we'll select A1. The preferred max ink field is used if you find the ink color to be good, but see that there is flooding in higher ink values. You can reduce the total amount of ink used by putting a lesser value of max ink. We recommend not using a max ink value of less than 280 wherever possible. A value of 280 to 360 is usually ideal. Click Next. We are now at the final ink test. Print the job from the queue as previously done throughout this demonstration. If you can print the colors without issues at this point, select Print is Good and click Next. If there are any issues, select Print is Bad and go back to adjust these settings. After clicking Next, you are taken to the Measurements Charts Calibration dialog. From here, you will print the swatch chart for scanning. Click Print Chart. The chart will show up as a job in the queue and you can then print the chart. With the chart now printed, you can go back to the Full Print Mode Creation Wizard and in the Measuring Charts Calibration dialog, start scanning the swatches. Position the chart within reach of the computer-connected NICS device. When you are ready to start scanning, click the Start button found in the Chart Measurement area. With the 3 second delay, you should have a reasonable amount of time to position the NICS sensor on each swatch. 
the computer will beep after each scan of the swatch, prompting you to move the NYX to the next swatch. If you miss positioning the NYX sensor on the following swatch in the allotted time and miss the scan, you'll have to restart the process starting at the very first swatch. Once the scanning is complete, click Next, and you'll now be in the Calibration Curves dialog. The values in this dialog will be set according to the information that has been gathered through the scanning process. You can't tweak the calibration values as they are for information only. CADLINK normally recommends using the Color Logic setting found in the Calibration Curves Creation drop-down list at the top. Click Next. This is where you will measure the ICC charts. Click Print Charts as you have before. Now, use the NYX sensor and measure each color swatch. Use the same process you use when scanning the chart for calibration. When you have completed the scanning, click Next. This brings you to the Profiling dialog. Go to the Profile Calculation Settings drop-down found at the top and choose the type of printing process you'll be using. Choose from Inkjet, UV, Low Ink, a form of Inkjet, DTG, direct film or Laser. These are presets that Catlink has created to work for various common workflows. You can tweak the settings for the desired maximum and minimum ink. If you find there is too much ink in your output, you can reduce the total max ink coming from your color ink to avoid bleeding and flooding. The minimum makes sure there is a limit on the amount of ink restriction to ensure a level of quality to your print. The safe black is controlled by preset values in Digital Factory to give you the best results. It is best to have this selected for most cases. In Custom Black, you can use the slider to set the GCR, or Gray Component Replacement, amount. This is how the grays are handled in the image. The initial start of the gradient will be created using the combinations of other inks mixing to create the gray. Then, depending on the setting, the substitution of black for the gray component begins. The black start sets when the actual black ink starts to be used in a gray gradient. The black width sets how far into the gradient the black is used as a replacement. The black point calculation and gamut is created from the previous scanning done by the NYX sensor. Click Next. The progress bar will appear if the profile needs to be rebuilt based on your settings. In the next dialog, you set the default profile you would like to use. We recommend using the profile sRGB plus ISO coded, which is closest to industry standard for color matching. The Catlink wide profile will give you brighter colors, but will be less accurate. Each profile set at the top will then apply input profiles for vector and image input profiles for RGB, LAB, and CMYK values. Based on this information, the output profile is calculated. Well-designed image artwork will have profiles which Digital Factory will use instead of what is set here. This way the image will output to the original specifications of the designer. It's recommended to have Apply ICC to Grayscales selected. If selected, CMYK will be used to create grayscales. If this is not selected, grayscales will print with just black, without using cyan, magenta, or yellow, and will not look dark enough in most cases. Spot color matching is an internal matching system used to emulate industry spot colors. Click Next. In this dialog, you will label your profile for different categories. You can select the available option in the dropdown, or you can type in your own option. Let's say for ink set, I want to have Epson in the name, so I type Epson DTF inks. Under category, I want this profile to be used for black and dark colored shirts, so I'll type in black and dark colored shirts. For media manufacturer, I'll enter the brand of shirt. And finally, in the media description, I'll add cotton. Click Next. The final dialog is a summary and contains information on the location of the print mode and profile settings as well as the spectral photometer used. Click Finish. After the completion of the profile, the print mode will become an active print mode and can be accessed from the print mode drop down list on the job tab. Thanks for watching! If this video helped you, hit the like button and if you have any questions, please reach out to us at any time. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos covering all of Catling's products.